any announcements as to who will replace Jeffrey Bard? Not yet. Um, we'll probably be making that announcement, I would say, after Alpha 1. So look for that, I would say, probably around August timeframe. You know, obviously, lead designer is a very important aspect to the development. Um, right now, I've been assuming a lot of those responsibilities, also delegating a lot of those responsibilities out to my senior designers who are very talented. Our design team is a is an, an awesome, fantastic team. We have incredible talent there. Um, for me, you know, I am, I'm a very calculated individual. When I move forward on something, I, I don't need to rush it. I don't need to settle. So um, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a process that's going to take time. And, um, you know, when I have landed on an individual, um, either internally from a promotion standpoint or externally, uh, candidates that we've gone through and, and met with and interviewed, uh, several of them who have even flown out to the studio and, and gotten pretty far in the process. Um, for me, this is, Ashes is my baby. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that one of the very most important roles is is held by an individual that I can trust with that baby. So <clears throat> it's going to be a process. But when you when when we find someone um, that I'm comfortable with, you guys will be made aware. All right, guys, it's Jalan. And today I want to talk about who should be the new lead game designer. Now, those of you that don't know this, uh, back in May, Jeffrey Bard, who had been the lead game designer, departed. I talk about this in a video. It's up there in the upper right-hand corner. Basically, Jeff is leaving, and what does the future hold? Now, a lot of people are nervous that the lead game designer left on an MMORPG in development, and rightfully so. It's a big position. And not only was Jeff leaving a big hit to the team, but Jeff was one of the original Kickstarter OGs that were still there. Because, you know, after the Kickstarter, time goes by and people leave and you're left with a small core that were there on day one. Now, this isn't a big deal. Nobody should freak out because this happens all the time in startup businesses. And really, the important part here is that the important people are still there. The important people in the studio, Stephen and John, they're still in place. Everybody's favorite, Michael Bacon, is still there. You got Keith and Jeff, those OGs, now in color from the front page. They're joined by some new friends. And they're also joined by this OG, Tristan Snodgrass, who's still apparently back at the studio working on Nodes 3. And he's not done yet. So if you want a little laugh in your day, my Nodes 3 is in the upper right-hand corner. With that said, the timeline for the lead game designer goes, in May, Jeff departs. And they made the statement that they would replace the lead game designer post-Alpha 1. Because they were going into Alpha 1 in July through August. Now, let's just say this right off the bat. You were not going to get a new project lead, a lead game designer, to come in in the middle of Alpha 1. The reason why is that's a very public position. That's a very public face to the company. They were going to come in. They were really going to be executing somebody else's plan. So if it all went well, Jeff would get the credit. Oh, look how well uh, Jeffrey Bard set up Alpha 1. But if it all went bad, the new, late, the new lead game designer is the person in the seat. So they're going to they're gonna catch all the flack for it. So waiting until Alpha 1, really good decision. Then as you heard Steven say, they're not in a rush. They also were doing really important things in August and September. They were making that Unreal Engine 5 decision. In October through December, they were doing that Unreal Engine 5 upgrade. They still have parts of that to finish. So now is the time to be talking about the lead game designer. And it's January and we have no announcement. Now, as you heard Steven say, they do have the time to find the right fit. This is Steven's baby. But I want to go with something really radical here. I want, to, I want to make a statement that I think is absolutely crazy. When it comes to who should be the new lead designer, I think the new lead designer should be Steven himself. The reason why I say this is this isn't the same company from 2017. If we look at exactly what has gone on with uh, Ashes of Creation, Steven has always been the creative director. He's now got six years on the project. He's got six years experience. And from my background in the military, people with less experience do bigger projects. They lead more people. They have bigger budgets. So when somebody's immediately going to punch back with Steven doesn't have the experience, I'm going to say, well, that's not true. He, he has the background above and beyond what other project leaders have. Steven has absolutely grown in experience. He, he sounds like a game developer now. He's gained in knowledge. He definitely knows a lot about game development now. 
and his confidence. His confidence has grown immensely in the times that he's been doing those live streams with us, those interviews with content creators, with the media. What I'm going to do right now is I want to string in about a minute and a half of Steven's last live stream where he's absolutely just crushing it, proving to us that he could be the new lead game designer. The great thing about UE5 is that it's it's mainly focused around updating the renderer, right? Giving access to Nanite, Lumen, Global Illumination. Like those are those are big components. There's other great got um, great aspects of it, but really it's a front end change um, and it doesn't affect uh, our networking layer. It doesn't affect our back end, um, you know, uh, code. So Nanite brings us really an entirely new approach to to rendering and art workflows. Um, <clears throat> you know, now we can render more actors with extremely high detail while eliminating the need to bake out normal map textures. For artists, essentially, you know, what this means uh, is that they can import high quality sculpted meshes directly into Unreal 5 without really having to reduce the poly count, uh, making the workflow more efficient while simultaneously improving the quality of the art. Lumen is going to greatly improve the visual fidelity and performance of the game um, with a reduced work and effort that's required by the art team, making Ashes of Creation much more beautiful than in UE4. Lumen gives us uh, a much more realistic approach to lighting. Uh, it utilizes a dynamic global illumination um, that, as you can see in the video, really brings the the world to life. The thing about the spec is obviously we want to make it the game as accessible to everyone. And in that sense, the scalability settings and the and the options that players will have to play the game at different quality levels um, is going to be is going to be the, the big uh, part of that question. All right. So on the topic of lead game designer, what I want to ask, and this is the part of the show where I want you to put in your comments, who could they bring in? Who is a free agent right now that they could get from retirement or not working to come in and work on Ashes of Creation. Remember, they don't want to be known as poaching somebody from a project. The big question is, would that new person just fall in line with the ideas? Remember, there is a 4,000 page game design document. Would the new lead game designer execute that game design document or would they bring in their own agenda? Would they use Ashes of Creation as an opportunity to try to execute some of their not realized, you know, pipe dreams that they hoped that they could put into other games? I really do believe this. I really do believe Steven should be the lead game designer. I think Steven should work on bringing in people he needs to support. If Steven needs a particular skill set that a lead game designer would have that he doesn't have, he should just hire somebody. He should bring in the same for those capabilities. If Steven feels he doesn't know how to do X, then bring in an assistant game designer who can do X and then can teach Steven how to do X. Now I know this sounds really radical and that's probably going to get some people, you know, that's probably going to get some people saying, Jay, you're, you're, you're off the reservation again, come back to reality. But what I really want is I really want your feedback. Do you think Steven is up to the task or if not, who should they bring in? With that, uh, this is also a sort of open forum. If you have any other questions about Ashes of Creation, leave those in the comments below. Some of those may spark off new videos. As I've been saying recently on my videos, I need a favor from you guys. Up there in the upper right hand corner and down in the description is PGN Music. If you could do me a huge favor, go over there, subscribe to that channel. Trying to get that channel monetized for my fellow content creators. It's all DMCA free music. You can use it while you're streaming. You can use it in your videos. If you guys play D&D, there's a lot of D&D ambience tavern music there. And if you have a fa uh, favorite type of music that you want to see on that channel, let me know. I'll work on getting that produced in 2022. Until next time, guys, if you have a question about Ashes of Creation, hit me up over on my Twitch. I'm live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or just leave whatever comments you have in the comments below. Take care. I'll see you next time. We've reached the end of another video. Time to thank the sponsors. Yes, that will do, that will do. Shall we pop off for a spot of tea?